Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Vangelis with one more delve into the SIC-ified world of Gaia Memory Superheroics. Kamen Rider Doubles, Fang, Joker, and Skull were packed together to round out the initial SIC Double Trilogy. This Baroque Begins Night was made possible by HLJ. Let us begin with the black and white bestial warrior, Fang Joker. Like his predecessor forms, Fang Joker has a stylized sculpt that adds a biomechanical edge to the double aesthetic. The fangified spikiness is present, durable, and painful to rub against yourself. Seriously. Scratch marks. Even the lining of the suit is spiked out a little bit. Also returning is the unfortunate seam on the side of the head, though the solution for that is the same as before. The Joker half is painted identically to Cyclone Joker, while the Fang half has a slightly darkened, slightly pearlescent white finish. Slightly. I've covered the SIC double body's posability twice before, and Fang Joker brings absolutely nothing new to the table. The only update is that despite the small limitations in the hips, this articulation still allows for some nicely feral poses to go with Fang's wild side. It is a bit harder to swap the fang side hands, though, due to a gimmick in his wrist cuff. The fists, calm open hands, and holding things hands are what you've seen before on previous SIC double releases. However, Fang Joker also comes with a pointing white hand as well, to allow Philip to tap his forehead and... point at... fools. There is also a pair of righteous rage hands, something sadly lacking from Fang Joker's figure arts version. As pointed out to me by Ace Welshman Mikey G Wolf V two three four seven eight. This double driver comes with a Joker memory and a somewhat foldable Fang memory. The sculpt of the Fang memory is delightfully greebly, with a lovely red eye to top things off. It doesn't transform into its dinosaur mode, but never fear, there is a separate copy of the Fang memory in its solo form. Nothing moves, but it is sculpted and painted quite well. And tiny! I really enjoy it as a display companion piece. The Fang Blade armament is represented entirely in die-cast metal. Basically, you can swap out the wrist guard for the arm Fang. It's not hard to do, but does make the white hands hard to change out, since the peg itself is removable. Opening the chest allows you to swap in the Shoulder Fang piece, which sadly does not have a removable blade. Instead, you can swap the original shoulder pad back into place and have double wield the standalone shoulder fang piece. I kind of wish this had all been integrated together a little bit more, but this does result in a stronger sculpt. Finally, the Maximum Drive Blade uses an anklet swap akin to the arm fang. All of these methods result in sturdy installations of the fang blades and are a bit less scary to do than on the figure arts version. Less tiny parts, more zinc. So you know how I mentioned a solution for the seam line on the head sculpt? That is once again solved by Fang Joker's surprising compatibility with the SIC double form change gimmick. And honestly, this is a novelty at best. I appreciate that everything you need is provided right down to a split version of the jagged-edged Fang Joker V-fin. There's even an additional left fin for a non-fangerized Shotaro side to unite with Philip's feral form. However, since no other double halves have the fangified pointiness, any combinations look a little bit weird. It feels like a fun throwback to the double form change Fang Joker figure, though. This set comes with another companion memory gadget in the form of the Snail-tastic Den Den Sensor. It doesn't really look as striking as the others, but does still transform into a set of goggles that can kind of be held in front of a figure's eyes, sort of. I'm sure someone's excited. I'm kind of excited. The second half of this set is the man among hat-wearing men, Narumi Sokichi, Kamen Rider Skull. He reuses the double body limbs, but has an all-new torso and looks pretty cool. I like the ribcage detailing a lot, as well as the stylized S's on his shoulder pad linings. His lost driver still functions despite only taking the included skull memory as a single input. His ragged scarf is very similar to Cyclone's, and its added neck wrap pegs into place solidly. I like his grim helmet sculpt, though it does take liberties that some may not enjoy. It bends the visage of Skull into a far more skeletal grin. Sadly, it still has the side of the head seam lines, which I really wish weren't present. You get both of Skull's usual hat options with this figure, as well as a clear plastic scalp sheath to prevent paint sticking in humid climates. 
Unfortunately, the hats barely stay on his head and will fall off at a moment's notice. Don't even try to touch him if you're using the plastic sheath as well. That's just, like, slick air hockey business. I wish a magnet system had been used to help hold down at least one of the hats, as the PVC just doesn't cling properly to Skull's head. It's just a shameful position for a man to be in. This is the SIC double body with the scarf joint of the Cyclone half. All I can add is that Skull's hat will fall off if you move anything, so you may want to just leave it off while posing and then replace it when you're done. He has most of the usual SIC double hands, as well as a pair that includes Fang's pointing right hand and a two-finger pointing left hand. Both really suit his more ominous delivery of the sin-counting catchphrase we all know and love. Despite being a simple recolor of the Trigger Magnum, Skull's far more iconic firearm is... a simple recolor of the Trigger Magnum. You can still load it with the Skull memory for some maximum drive action, but it no longer has anywhere to store when not in use. I certainly wouldn't want it hanging off of Skull's chest, but I wish it could clip onto his belt somehow. The briefcase that led to the birth of Kamen Rider Double is included here, and look! In an uncharacteristically un-Bandai maneuver, it comes filled with a storage double driver and six Gaia memories! I really thought I'd have to provide the memories from my other SIC Double dudes. The only problems I have with it are that it's kind of difficult for Skull to carry, and it's a bit easy for memories to just fall out while opening it up. That would make for some awkward lack of tension in a climactic action scene. Memories bouncing on the floor and attractive young Japanese men going, Mate, mate yo, mate, ah. To represent Skull's first transformation from the beloved Movie War core, an alternate crystal head is provided in the set. It's cast in a fantastic pearl clear plastic over a silver core and has a very cool visual effect. Unfortunately, that same effect also makes awful light of its vertical seam line, which sticks out like a sore thumb, and sadly drags down the quality of this part when not viewed directly from the front. Another Movie War Core-inspired component is the alternate chest piece. This has hinged ribcage parts that reveal translucent purple innards. I'm glad this part can swap out, as the gimmick really causes the sculpting to look less subtle and more toy-like. And these aren't toys, are they? No. They're man-dolls. Completing the Movie War core trinity of accessories is the Scullular Fireball. Nicely sculpted and rendered in cool purple translucent plastic, you sadly need an additional stand or your own fingers to show it erupting from Skull's open chest. On the bright side, it does come apart to clip around his foot so he can deliver a hard-boiled rider kick. This is possibly the best standalone common rider double set to come out of SIC. While it can interact with the form change gimmick of previous sets, it doesn't need them to feel like you're getting your full money's worth, since you're getting two great solo designs. Fang Joker is the winner of the pair, succeeding in almost all respects. Unfortunately, though Skull should be the main draw of the box, I found him not as cool a figure. This is almost entirely due to his head. The side seam is a bummer on the Silver Skull, and an absolute detraction on the Crystal Skull. Also, there had to have been a better way to secure his hat. As it is, its inability to stay in place is quite distracting to me and pushes him far more towards the realm of a display piece. Which is where I always felt SIC had been trying to move away from with its Kamen Rider engineering of late. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis. As of early 2012, that's all for the regular retail releases of Kamen Rider Double in the super imaginative Chogokin realm. I hope this and other videos have helped you get a feel for that series of figures, so you can decide whether or not to count up your super imaginative sins.